how long should they replace the PPFA? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna head over to Hughes Detailing, do a six months checkup on the car, the PPF, the ceramic coating. So let's get going, I'm running late. Loud. All right guys, so as you heard in the beginning of the video, we're gonna be heading over to Hughes Detailing and we're gonna do a follow up. And this is a six months checkup of the PPF and also the ceramic coating. And then I posted on my story you guys had any questions and it seems like a lot of you guys had some questions so we're gonna tackle some of those questions today um, but it's gonna take me about two hours to get there I know it's we're probably gonna hit some traffic we're going to Miami and I'm gonna enjoy the ride it's a nice cool day here in South Florida all right guys we're here at Hughes detail it took about two hours to get here and we're here today to like talk about um, the six months review about having the PPF, ceramic coating, and answering a lot of the questions that you guys had about maintaining it, um, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and today we're going to tackle all those questions today. But as you can see, uh, we have my Emola Red G80 M3, and we also have Brandon's E46 Supercharge with the active supercharger, and yeah, it, it, I'm pretty sure it pulls pretty hard. All right, so we're here with the team at Hughes, and right now they're just taking some of the glue off. Um, basically, they, what they saw was a slight imperfection that they weren't happy to their standards. Again, when you guys do a full body PPF, they like to do an overview, look at the car, making sure everything's uh, tidy to their standards. And the rear bumper had some issue where they didn't like, so they were gonna redo the whole rear bumper. But now they're taking the glue off, which is probably the most boring part, right? Yeah, it's the most boring product smells bad but <laughs> the main thing is that it's still gonna protect the car and that's what we want to do we want to pre prevent it from scratches because how often do you have guests put stuff in the trunk and they just drag it out and it mars up your rear bumper All right, Kev, I'm gonna ask you a question. Out of all the G80s that came in, uh -huh. I know a lot have been coming in, all right? So what's your favorite color? No uh, pressure, not, don't say because of this. No, I already had it in my head. Okay, what's your favorite this color? This gray one that we yeah, had. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, it's called Gravy Gray. Gravy Gray? Gray? Yeah, that the one. The gray with sick. the gold flakes in it? Yeah. That was here recently, right? It was yeah, like, oh, like last, week. last week. It was yeah. here, and honestly, I saw it in the shade at first. I didn't think nothing of it, and then Ed was like, oh, wait till you see it in the sun. And then we put it in the sun, it turned like this root beer color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was it has like that, so it has a mixture of champagne pearl, uh -huh. which is like a BMW color, right? And like brown and green yeah, in it, it's brown it's very brown. rich in color. It's nice. It's it shines and it shows its depth, especially in the sun. But in the shade, it's kind of like like a brownish gray. Yeah. It just looked like a normal like like yeah. hard gray. Like I didn't yeah. see, like I didn't think anything special with it. And it was like, oh, just wait. And he pulled it into the sun. I was like, so that was one of the colors I saw way back in the day. Uh -huh. And I actually thought about that color, but it's sick. Yeah. It's sick. It is, it is. But I feel like it will be on a lot of BMWs, but it's worth it. Yeah. It's a beautiful color. You can do a lot of schemes with it, I feel like. I love this. So that's but the, I'm, the, I'm the guy that wants to go really loud with the red on red on red. Hey, oh, works for you, works for you. I love this car. So, Kev, what do you think about the Active 2.0? I know you guys recently got that in the past couple months, right? I know I've had it for the past couple months. It's been changing my way of washing the car because I've never had one. So how has it helped you guys with washing customers' cars? It's a pretty night and day difference. Like the, the first time we used it, it foamed up. It was, it was sick. Like it was such a thick foam. And then I was just like, all right, that's cool. 
And then the rinsing process actually speeds it up tremendously. Like we're getting cars rinsed in like two minutes, three minutes. And I didn't really notice it before, but it's just, it's a game changer, honestly. And I think it's the only way to go now. I'm gonna have to buy one. Lunch is gonna buy one. Ed is gonna buy one. Brandon's gonna buy one. And then he's gonna buy us another one for Christmas. We're all gonna have- We're gonna have a pressure washer yeah. party here at Hughes Detail. Yeah, it's gonna be lit. All right guys, as you can see, they did a pre-rinse, making sure all the dust and contaminants got soaked up with the soap. Um, they rinsed it off, and now they foamed it again, and now they're mitting the car. Um, again, this is a process that they need to do in order to make sure everything's clean before they start uh, reapplying the PPF on the rear bumper again. All right, so we're gonna catch up with lunch. So lunch, how you been? Been chilling, man. Been going to school, been working. How old are you again? 19. 19 years old? Yeah. And you're hustling, going to school, working. Yeah, man, just 40 working. hours a week? 40 hours a week is, no, no. No, that's probably more than that, right? What? Working here. No, I don't really, I, well, now, since I'm on winter break, yeah. I'm gonna be here every day. Okay. Every day. But usually on when I'm in school, I, I miss Mondays yeah. and I leave a little early on Thursdays. Okay. That's pretty All right. much it. I hear you. It's hustling. I, yeah, I come it's in and put as much hours as I can. Yeah. Work hard. That's all, that's, that's all no, I'm I hear trying you. to do. Alright guys, like you saw in the beginning of the video, we're here back at Hughes Detailing and we're here with Brandon, right? Brandon, you guys met on the previous episodes. He is the owner of Hughes Detailing and today, um, for somebody that does a full PPF job, right? What do you guys call it? The full Monty? Um, depends, like usually full body paint protection yeah. film. Uh, the full Monty jobs are yeah. usually the kind of cars that come in for like uh, full body film, coatings, window tint, kind of like protecting every portion of the car. Correct. Uh, basically kind of like what you did, this would be more or less like a full Monty job. Okay. And then basically give it a couple months, right? Because film sometimes has to settle, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So um, there's a lot of things that go into film, you know, as much as we do on our end to try to make these cars look, have the film look as invisible as possible. Um, you know, sometimes you do have some, you know, issues here and there, um, you know, it can either be really to install or sometimes just so we do get film that does have some imperfections. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a piece of plastic at the end of the day and sometimes, you know, every brand does have every now and then some pieces that are not quite up to our level. And sometimes we notice it right away and we'll peel the film off and change it. And sometimes once the film fully settles, the cure, or sorry, the glue like cures and dries yeah. out. Um, you know, sometimes we see like little markings that we're not super happy with, you know, 
peel the film off, change it out, um, which is kind of one of the reasons why the car is here today. Yeah. So uh, partially so we can kind of go through the car, you know, um, do any like small little trims or adjustments, um, which is not uncommon whenever you do paint protection film. Sometimes as the film settles, you wash the car, Correct. panels vibrate, and yeah. you know, and uh, basically once the film has time to sit, you know, it's not uncommon for a couple little edges here, they need a little slight trim or adjustment um, just to basically get it looking, you know, perfect again. So the uh, full inspection job basically for him to see his yeah. work after a couple months and making sure everything's good to his standards because um, if it's not, they're gonna take the film off, refilm it again, do the whole process. Um, because they stand by their work, so Correct. you and guys saw earlier. And that's the biggest thing too with us is that whenever you do any sort of full body job or, or you know full front, um, we'll typically do more follow-ups with a lot of yeah. our film because there's a lot of factors that go into you know how the car is maintained, whether it's stored inside, outside, how Correct. the car is washed, who washed the cars. So little things like that can you know have some you know or cause some small little imperfections yeah. in the film, which is part of the reason why it's here today to kind of touch up a few areas so we can get this car looking you know how we want it. Yeah. Um, and just part of the process. So what we do is this is kind of what we do like a follow up, you know, so um, this is this whole car was wrapped. This is our first time seeing the car in almost, I think like almost like five almost, or six, five, six months. Yeah, like five or six months. Yeah. So the idea today is to pretty much have the car back in, you know, take care of any like little adjustments. If any pieces of film need to be changed out, so you have a brand new piece, yeah. that's what it's here for, uh, recoat those pieces. But then also just to make sure that we're checking the coating. So, you know, seeing how the wheels are, you know, uh, you know, maintain. Hydrophobic. Uh, yeah, same thing. Property um, checking the film, checking the wheels, checking the glass, basically looking over the whole car. And it's also good too because, you know, since Ken's the one maintaining his own car, yeah. we can look at the whole car, see if there's anything that needs to hit basically give him guidance on how to maintain it. Uh, for the most part, did a great job maintaining the car. Car looks awesome. <laughs> so, but you know, it's just also so we can, you know, help him maybe change his process in yep. case there's certain things on his product list that didn't quite work out. And we can kind of give him tips and tricks to make this car super easy for him to, you know, maintain. And throughout the video, I'm gonna hit him with some, a lot of questions about maintaining it. So I'll let Brandon work. Yeah. And uh, we'll see the end result later on. Obviously getting PPF is something that is very beneficial, right? Preventing scratches, preventing scr uh, marring. And so you wanna keep the car it is the way you bought it, right? Correct. What is some of the mistakes that people do um, after getting a PPF and ceramic coated? What have you seen that um, uh, some of your customers have done or even other customers, not even from your shop? Um, good thing, I mean, I've seen just about everything possible. Um, oh, Ed, grab me my other one. I squeegee, just grab me the other blue squeegee from the table. Um, God, I kind of seen it all. I think one of the biggest things, at least in our shop, we try to walk all of our customers through proper maintenance. So we try to minimize a lot of these possible issues. Um, I think the biggest one is more wash related um, in the sense of like, you know, not everybody can hand wash the car. Or sometimes, you know, after a period of time, they just become lazy about it. So they'll take it through like a dry through car wash yeah. or something like that. So sometimes you see pressure wash marking. So like, from the actual pressure of the wand, ripping the film or shooting water directly at the edges. So on some of the films that have less aggressive adhesives, um, you know, I've seen water shoot inside the film and get bubbles. And then people are wondering, like, yeah, like I did this car like four months ago or three yeah, months yeah. ago, and all of a sudden I got this whole pocket of water like yeah. underneath the film. That's one of the bigger things that we see. Most of my customers are pretty good, so it's very rare with Expel that we see that. Some of the other less aggressive adhesive films, it's more common. Um, or in the case of, you know, the car had some sort of ceramic coating beforehand where the film's not 100% bonding to the paint, you'll have more of a chance of things like that happening, lifting edges. Um, I've seen it before where sometimes, you know, people get stuff painted, like the car becomes an accident or something and the body mm. shop will sometimes paint over the film. Yeah. We've seen that plenty of times. I actually had a body shop one time on a rear bumper of like an NSX. They left the factory piece of film on there and cleared coat and painted right over it. That's horrible. So. <laughs> Like I said, we've seen just about everything already, some being good, some being you know, not so bad, so it really just you know, depends. What's the major mistake? You said washing method, right? So basically putting the pressure washer directly into the edges. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably the leading cause of like the number of the bigger issues that we have. Um, so people taking it through like a, uh, like a hand car wash or they're you know, not careful using a gas pressure washer or something like that. Um, being a little bit aggressive with um, you know, rinsing it too closely because the idea behind the pressure washer more than trying to like, you know, it's not, you're not cleaning a driveway, so you're not trying to, um, you know, strip all the dirt off it with pressure. It's more to like flood the car down with water. 
we all know Expel is one of the leading brands for PPF, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know they have a 10 year warranty. With the 10 year warranty, right? Correct. Um, what would you recommend for a person that keeps a car garaged? How long should they replace the PPF? If they keep the car long term, let's just say this is a car that they plan on keeping for generations because it's the last best car that he believes or he or she believes they're gonna be keeping and, and driving. Yeah. Um, for me, I think this is gonna be the car I'm gonna keep in long term because this is gonna be the last manual M3. Yeah. So what would we suggest? If I keep this car more than 10 years, um, at what point should I replace the so PPF? So I think a lot of that answer will dictate, you know, based on um, the level of wrap, maintenance, how much the car is driven. You know, for instance, like the warranty itself on the film doesn't cover necessarily wear and tear. So like rock chips, tears through the films, things like that. So, um, you know, if the car is kind of garage kept, you know, not driven as much, then, you know, the film's gonna last you a lot longer because at that point, you know, cosmetically, it's gonna look great. If you have a car that's tracked, daily driven, it's gonna get a lot more of a beating Absolutely, on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So at that point, you know, even though the film does have a 10 year warranty on there, I would say also because our climate here in South Florida is a little bit more on the brutal side. So the film will deteriorate a little faster than a lot of other climates that you know, don't have so much UV or heat, things like that. Um, so it's kind of one of those like loaded answers that we try to educate as much as we can on. But um, you know, I'd say like on a 10 year rated film, most films, especially on a daily driven car, will probably start getting changed out in the way like the five year mark and up period. So okay. I think it just really depends on how it's maintained, how well the film looks, correct, how it's maintained. And you know, more importantly, you know, everybody has different perceptions. Some people think like, hey, I'll get away with the wear and tear, and some people want it to be cosmetically perfect all the time too. So I think it just depends on you know how particular you are and you know how good you want it to you know look. Okay, one of the questions I had for myself is that sure. I like using a lot of let's just say drying it, right? And okay. you guys have been watching this channel for a little bit. You guys know I talk about bead maker all the time. Mm -hmm. It's something that I've used. Um, after how much, like after so many layers of drying aid, how can I maintain the hydrophobic properties? Because I've noticed that after multiple layers of bead maker, it kind of clogs up the pores a little bit. Yeah, so typically with, you know, especially with any of the good ceramic coatings out there, um, especially if it's something professional grade, you know, there's really not a whole lot of products you need to be constantly putting on the film in order to, or on top of the coating to really maintain it. Um, so usually the way we say about it is like, at least in Modesto, it's a super hydrophobic, you know, coating. So what happens is whenever you're putting a lot of these products on here, toppers, you know, spray sealant, spray waxes, things like that, you know, the coating itself is designed to be hydrophobic on its own. So when you start putting so many different products on here, it over time it's gonna to start to contaminate, you know, the top layer of the surface. But not only that, because you have, you know, contamination from normal driving, things like that as well, but you start adding all these other products, at some point it will inhibit their performance to it. So one of the things that we normally do is that even if you weren't using toppers, you know, we recommend, you know, uh, probably at least once or twice a year to at least do some sort of decon on the car with, you know, which can be physically and chemically. So whether you're doing, you know, uh, hitting it with clay or, um, you know, doing a chemical treatment like RNX. Um, there's really a lot that can be done, but um, at least twice a year is what we recommend because you want to strip that contamination off the, off the, the coating in the film. Especially so, if you park it outside, because I obviously keep my car garage, but there's times when I go to the supermarket, I park it under the tree because there's no other spots that are decent. Yep. And if you guys know, or I know Brandon knows, tree sap. Tree sap is annoying to get rid of. Correct, and that's a big one. So. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's, we don't really recommend to put so many different toppers on top of it because at that point it's not going to allow the coating to do the job that it's designed for. So, you know, bead maker and a lot of these other products, you know, everybody's going to have their differing opinions on there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but you know, things like that, as long as the coating is able to perform on its own, that's what matters more than anything. Um, you know, it's still good to do some sort of top, like, you know, wipe down or some sort of product after you wash the car. You know, specifically if you don't have filtered water, because it's gonna help take off some of the extra contaminants, minerals, things like that. Um, so, you know, like I said, I think a lot of it is just kind of like on a case by case basis. Um, depends on if you're able to wash the cars indoors in a climate or if you're outside in the sun. You know, at that point, then you have more factors that can slightly change your, your process to making it work better for you. All right, Brandon, so I'm a big fan of the two bucket method 
some people are a fan of the three bucket method. The three bucket mm -hmm. method is basically one for wheels, right? Yep. And two for the wash. Since getting the car PPF and ceramic coated, do I still need to do the two bucket method? What would um, you recommend? Well, I'm always gonna lean in the direction to what I think is gonna be safest for the car. So even though you do have film, and yes, it does make washing and maintaining the car that much easier, I still recommend um, to at least use multiple buckets because you still can scratch the PPF, just like normal paint to some degree. It's just, yes, you have a, an extra protective layer, but the idea is to protect, you know, or maintain the film so you're not having to constantly change it out. Um, so using multiple buckets, I still personally recommend it. Um, I th think it's a safer way because, you know, you can still get dirt on your wash mitt, things like that. How long does the coating last when it's exposed to outside weather conditions? Um, like you're not garage capped at all. So like the same Modesta coating that's on your car or just in general? Mod Modesta coating then. Okay, so, um, you know, that coating's gonna depend on, or just any coating in general. You know, that's kind of the, the way the market's going where everybody's ceramic coating this, ceramic coating that. And there's graphene and everything. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of, some it's marketing terms, some it's actual technology. You know, everybody's gonna uh, have their opinion on stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not here to bash anybody or start an argument. Um, you know, so at least I'll, I can, I'd rather speak in just my experience with the coatings that we use. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with Modesta, um, their coatings are rated, you know, depending on, you know, which specific coating we're talking about. So we have paint stuff, glass, wheels, leather interior, things like that. Um, our climate is a little different. So when it comes to dealing in a more tropical, heavy heat, heavy UV index climate, you know, coatings or anything that has a reading on there is gonna obviously very differently than somewhere like up north, like Utah, California, where the weather is in general, you know, a lot less, br less brutal. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll have seasons, snow, things like that. But for us, UV and heat is, is a game changer. Um, so for instance, you know, what we like to rate all of our coatings are on is kind of like more of the minimum of what we recommend it. So I'd rather undersell a product than oversell it. Because once you oversell it, then, you know, it's not the same thing. So the biggest thing is setting you know, expectations. Um, so Modesta BC-08, for instance, which is Modesta kind of entry-level uh, professional grade coating, um, we rate that for about two years of durability on a daily driven car. Um, like for instance, we just had a Corvette come in the other day that we did three years ago, and the car still looks great. Yeah. It's still holding up awesome. Um, so a lot of it depends on how it's maintained, how it's washed, things like that. Um, you know, so for instance, we rate BC-08 at about two years for a daily driven car. And then BC05, like which is on your car, um, we've we rate it as a five-year coating. We've had you know plenty of cars hit the five-year mark, um, and I can actually say that, which is kind of cool because we've yeah. been in business for over five years. Nice. Where a lot of other shops have just gone into the industry saying, "Hey, we're selling nine-year coatings," haven't had the time to back it up. So yeah. I can proudly say that we've actually had coatings hit that threshold period of point, you know, with proper maintenance. So. You know, what's cool too is having real world testing with, you know, products that we use actually work. So we're not, you know, it's not smoke in the mirrors. What we're selling here is, you know, legitimate. Um, but yeah, so Modesta, all the Modesta coatings work really great in our, you know, climate down here in South Florida. Um, heat and things like that, it's really brutal. So for us, whatever we sell, we have to make sure it's gonna work and more importantly, hold up. Uh, somebody also asked, can you scratch the film? And if you do scratch it, how can you fix it? Yes, so clear film isn't bulletproof. Um, it does have its pros and its cons and it's not like the most ideal you know, product for everybody. Um, basically clear film is the only form of protection that'll stop physical damage to the car. Um, rock chips, scratches, things like that. So what'll happen is um, you, know, you can still scratch the film because the film is a multi-layered um, piece of you know, film. Um, so you can still rip through the film, you can still tear it, gouge it, um, or in the case of instance, like you use really harsh brushes, like most regular car washes yeah. that have, um, say, uh, like, or if you have a washman on the floor and it gets dropped on the floor and has a piece of gravel in there, you can still scratch through the film okay. um, to the point where you can go through the self-healing top coat of the PPF. Every PPF brand is like that. I don't care if it's top coated or hydrophobic. Um, you can easily still scratch through the top layer with you know the right abrasion um, or you know having the right amount of force to it. Okay. So um, it's not impervious, but you know it is definitely a lot better than having no protection on there. So who would you recommend get PPF? 
Like, what is your ideal customer? What is he afraid of or she afraid of? What is your ideal customer that you would suggest getting PPF for? Um, I say kind of the best or best candidates, because I don't want to say best customers, um, because I think, you know, it's kind of like a loaded answer. Um, best cars in general would ideally be a new car, or in the case of you're going to have a car for a very long period of time, and you want to maintain and keep it looking, you know, the way it is. Um, so, you know, with film, you know, I would say a lot of it depends on the car, the amount of driving you do to it, how long you're planning on keeping the car. Um, so usually some of the best customers are the ones that um, either the cars are very expensive to the point where the film is just like having a secondary insurance and hoping to never use it, or if you plan on keeping a car for a very long period of time and you just want to be able to drive with peace of mind and knowing that, you know, years down the road you can, you know, take the film off and your paint looks like perfect underneath there. Um, I think that's how we look at how our clients as far as because we're not doing hard sells, it's more educating the customers so that way they understand exactly what they're getting um, instead of just, you know, taking every customer for, you know, just the dollar sign figure of it. Um, so more importantly, we're here to really help our customers protect their cars and keep it looking great for years to come. Yeah, so my question to you is, when are we gonna go to Korean barbecue? Are you can eat? <laughs> I've been asking these guys. It's not me. I never been once. It's hard, man. It's hard. No, don't we're, say it's hard. We're it's far. Far. We're far. We're not, you're farther now. I'm far. I'm far too. Exactly. So you still gotta drive halfway. Yeah. So I know I, Brandon's I'm all really, about I, it. I, I'm going down. I just can't tell you yes because if he says no, then he's the one that wants to ride up with me. My, my weekends are busy. Oh, oh. weekends are busy. Well, shit, you sleep half the weekend. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. no. We don't have to go on a weekend. We could go like on a Friday after work. That's exactly what we did. Every you know? time we Friday after work. And can't have any excuse. Well, I'm putting you on blast. Here, I hear the excuses coming out right now. Maybe he can't eat meat. I don't know. Maybe he's oh, no, maybe I, he's a I, vegan. No, no, he's, he's a vegan. No, All right, so as you can see, Brandon's basically assembling the taillights back on. In a little bit, we're going to take this car back into the other bay. And they're going to ceramic coat the rear bumper, making sure it's protected. Um, and then um, after that, it should be good to go. And I'll be heading back up on traffic. We're gonna be stuck in traffic for probably for like another two hours. But you can see everything looks pretty good. Seamless like always. Um, the other problem where I guess it was peeling off before a little bit was right over here in this uh, section. But again, it was um, something that they addressed and they addressed pretty quickly after they saw it. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you guys see this on camera, but just in this area here, it's gonna be the high impact area. You can definitely see where the film's been protecting the paint. It's been pitting over here from obviously the wide aggressive uh, spaces I have on this car, but you can see where it's been protecting and also the pitting. So, um, highly suggest you guys get some film in this, in this area if you guys don't do the full car. So this portion of the video is just them basically going to be ceramic coating the rear bumper. Enjoy the cinematic footage. Um, nothing that we didn't go over on the last previous videos. All right, the guys here are pretty much wrapping things up. They're just gonna do a quick wipe down, uh, making sure that when I go home when it's pitch black outside, it's gonna look nice and glossy. I'm just joking. It's gonna be nice and dark when I get home, but again, these guys are putting in the work. If you guys need anything for your car, whether it's paint protection film on the entire car or just the front clip, I highly recommend these guys. These guys are wizards. Uh, they take really good care of making sure that everything is done precisely. And as you saw today, they saw some imperfections in uh, the rear bumper and they just decided to redo it again. So um, shows you their workmanship. I know some places probably would just basically just trim those edges and make sure it's whole, but uh, that's not how they work here.
So I want to thank the team over at Hughes Detailing for taking care of my G80 M3. If you guys have any questions, definitely shoot them an email and uh, we'll finish this video when we get in the car. I'm gonna head out of here. I wanna thank uh, Kev, lunch, lunchbox, lunch, and then uh, Ed. So definitely see them at the show at the Invasion of Orlando this February. They're gonna be there. Definitely ask them a lot of questions about what they do, and also some questions you may wanna answer yourself. So I wanna thank them again, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Anything, anything? We'll see you guys at the show. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> So lame, man. Yeah, I know, man. We love, we love, like we curls are in Wait, wait, wait. Do me a favor. If you guys come to the show, you gotta ask him exactly why he doesn't want to go to Korean barbecue. Ah, that's <laughs>